Everyone's trying to post smarter on social media, but I stopped posting completely. Instead, I built an AI system that does it for me. Let me show you how. Hey, I'm Larry with AutoKit, and no, this isn't another Canva design tutorial. I'm going to be showing you a workflow that makes your Instagram and Facebook feeds post themselves. No reminders, no stress, just set it up once and let the system do the work. Let's get started. So to get started with our use case example here, which is going to be creating quotes for our social media posts, we're going to be using a Google Sheet in which to add our quotes in and also the author. And then we're going to be using an app in Canva called Bulk Create. So in lieu of quotes, you don't have to have quotes here. I'm just using that for our example but you could put any type of phrasing here in order to generate words with your images in Canva. So we've got quotes, author. So those two will be mapped in our bulk create process. And then we have a post number and status. And finally, our last column is image. Our post number and status, that helps us with the workflow, which we'll be doing in just a few minutes. For now though, let's go over to Canva, get ourselves a template that we can use to then do this bulk create process, and then we'll go into our workflow. I'm just going to do a quick search for Instagram quotes. There we go. And I think I'm gonna be using this one right here, the black with the gold yellow highlights. So we're gonna just select that. It opens up in this page here, just to take a closer look at it. And then we're gonna click on customize this template. So let's just say I am happy with the way it works. Obviously, you'd be tweaking it with your brand colors and font styles and everything else you'd like to add to the backgrounds and things like that. But in this example, we're going to go with it as is. So our next step is to take what we've got in our Google Sheet and import it into our design. So to do that, we're using the app again called Bulk Create. And if you don't see it here, if you've never used it before in Canva, uh, you'll have to go into the apps and then do a search for bulk and just hit enter. And you'll see it right here called bulk create. Now, if you are on a free Canva account, uh, you won't be able to get access to this app. It's only for paid account users on Canva. So we're gonna use this, we'll click on bulk create. Now there are a variety of ways in which to get your data in to our design. So we can enter data manually, we can upload data, or we could connect our Google Sheet. For this example, I'm gonna be using the Google Sheets direct connection. So I'm gonna click on Google Sheets. I've already connected my Google account to Canva so it knows where to pick up those sheets. And here is our sheet right here. That's the one we're gonna use. And we're gonna select it, and it's gonna take in our columns and rows, and we'll click on Done. Now that we've added in our data, we have to map our data to the fields in our quote template that we're using right here. So I'm gonna highlight this text box right here, click on it and click on the three dots and then click on connect data. I'm gonna connect it to the quotes column. So that one is now mapped. And for the website down here, I'm just gonna use that for the author. Again, click the three dots and click on connect data and then click on author. So we're going to be importing author and quotes into our bulk create. So we've mapped our two fields here and then we can click on advanced options and you do have additional things you can do. You can change it from one design with multiple pages, which is what we're going to do, or you could bulk create as 10 individual designs. You can also name each page in your multiple uh, page design. Uh, we won't be doing any of that. We'll just keep it original design name. And then we are gonna change it where we save it to. In save in, we're gonna save it into this folder right here called Big Magics. And so we'll select that and we'll click on add to folder. And then we're gonna click on continue. And then we're gonna click on generate 10 designs here down the bottom. And you'll see a message at the top here. It says one design created and saved to make magics. So it saved it to our folder. We click on view design. We'll see that all of our quotes have come in and along with our quote author. Now, one of the things that you'll do from a design perspective is spend a little bit time uh, making sure all of your quotes have enough space 
and you could change it to your font styles, font colors, your brand colors, all that good stuff that you normally do in designs, maybe change the background. We're just gonna go with it as is. We will change this up here to auto kit demo, just so that we know what it is. And that's all we have to do on this side. So all of our designs have been generated. We're good to go. Now it's time for our workflow over in AutoKit. So here in AutoKit, I've already got our workflow assembled and let's go through it step by step. So our first step or actually our trigger is a schedule. And let's open that up and take a look. So at every five days, run this workflow. Easy enough. So that's our trigger, okay? So we'll just click save there. Our next step or our first action step is to look up the spreadsheet row. And what we're looking for is to see if that status is pending. If it is, then continue the workflow. If it isn't, then end the workflow. And so once we find a value called pending, proceed to the next step. So we've got our spreadsheet, a Canva quote tracker, which is over here, right? And it's going into that status column and looking for pending. And we'll just click continue here. If we click on test action, it'll say pending and it is found as true. So we can click on save there. Our next action step is calling up the Canva export design option. So let's open that up and take a look. So let's back up a step from the configuration and look at the select. So we're using the Canva app. You will have to create an integration in Canva. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. We do have a excellent tutorial, a written tutorial to follow. We'll post that in the description below for you to go take a look at and follow along to in order to get your Canva app integrated with AutoKit. Once you have that done, you've got your connection. We'll go into the configuration tab. We have folder ID and we've already established that we've moved our design into our Make Magics folder. And so we've got that in there. And we're gonna select our design ID. It's actually, we can just select the design name. So we refresh this little option here. And if we click on the drop down list, we should see our AutoKit demo minimalist simplest, simple motivational quote Instagram. That's the one we want. Our format type is gonna be PNG. And then if we go under show options here, our first option, which is pages, which is where our post number is going to be coming from. So how do we get that in there? So we hit the uh, at symbol here and under our lookup spreadsheet row, which it found as pending, right? So we're gonna look for the post number one, okay? And so that's where we select that and it enters and it puts it in there just like that. In other words, what we're doing is we're mapping the post number to the quote that's in our Google Sheet to the page that's in our multi-page design. Make sense? So in addition to our pages, we have height and width. We're staying with 10, uh, 1,000. You could do uh, 1,080 if you wanted to. Let's just make it 1,080. Our loss list is set to true and export as a single image is false. And we'll click on continue here and we'll click on test action and we'll get something that says an ID and in progress, which leads us to our next step. So we'll click save here. Our next step is to delay because it's in progress, we're just gonna give it a little bit of time before we actually fetch that design that was just exported. 10 seconds, that's our delay. And we'll click save there because our next step here is to fetch the design that we've just exported. So if we open up our next canvas step here, you'll see that it's looking for an export ID and that's that a job ID that was generated. So if I hit the at symbol here, if we go under export design, you'll see that job ID right there. So that's how we put that in there. Let me just take that out. So let's just click on continue here and then we'll click on test action and we'll see that our status is now success, not pending, and we have an export URL. So all looking well here, we'll click on save. Our next step is open AI to create the caption for our image we've just exported. So we'll click on that. We're using the model GPT-4.0. We're giving it a role of a professional social media caption writer. We're giving it a task to generate and optimize social media captions. And we're giving it guidelines 
some SEO options, uh, use pr pronouns, hashtags, uh, voice, and some accuracy, and giving it some context and some examples of what the output should be. And we're also giving it the message. How do we base the caption based on the image? Well, we can't, and that's why we're using our Google Sheet to import our quote so that ChatGPT can have a chance to take a look at what the quote is and determine the best caption. So we've got our data here of quotes. So it's pulling in that quotes row. And if we hit the add symbol here, go up to our find a specific spreadsheet row, it's finding this quote right here. And that's the one that it's put into our ChatGPT message. And so we click on continue here, we click on test action, and you'll see that it's produced a nice tidy caption right here with some hashtags. And from there, we can just click on save. Now, our next few steps here is taking what's been generated and exported from ChatGPT in Canva and putting it out onto social media. Now, our first run of steps here is to put it out on Instagram for business. So in order to do that, you have to actually export the image from Canva and we'll put it into Dropbox in this case. And then from Dropbox, it will go out on Instagram and there's two calls for Instagram that you have to do. So let's break this down. So our first call is to Dropbox. So we're taking our file URL that came out of our fetch design export, this job URL right here and we're putting it into Dropbox. And we're giving it a file name of post number, post number, just something simple. And we're putting it in a folder called Canva Images. Simple enough. So we'll click continue here, we'll click on test action. Image is now going to be generated and uploaded to Dropbox. With that done, we can then take our uploaded image from Dropbox and put it into Instagram. And the reason for that step is that you cannot directly export an image from Canva into Instagram. So you have to put it somewhere else temporarily and then add it to Instagram. So our first step on the Instagram upload is the create the photo post. So let's take a look at this action step. So a couple of things for Instagram, A, you'll have to have a business portfolio and have a Facebook page, of course, and then the Facebook page has to be connected to Instagram. And then you'll have to have an Instagram for business account for your Instagram. So there's a lot of steps involved there that this video is not gonna cover. But once you have that set, then you can then connect AutoKit to your Instagram for business account. And our event here is to create a photo post. And then under the configuration tab, it's asking for an Instagram business account ID. Now, if you click on the title of that field name, it will tell you how to get it. So if you put in an action step called fetch page Instagram user ID, you're then able to get your user ID very easily versus having to go through Instagram or Facebook or some other way to get it. I just found that was the easiest way to do it. And it's looking for an image URL, of course, and that is from Dropbox. So if we just do the ad symbol here, and if we scroll down here, we'll see here's our direct media link, and that's what we've put into our image URL. And then we're adding in our caption from ChatGPT. So we just set the ad symbol there, select chat completion, scroll down to where it says content, and that's what we've put in there. And then click continue and click on test action you'll see that it has generated an ID right here. And that's important for our next step, which is actually posting the image. So what we've just done now is create a draft post in our Instagram account. So we'll click save here. And our next step is the publishing the post that was now in draft. So again, using that Instagram business account ID, and we're using the creation ID that was just generated in the previous step. So if we go under create photo post, you'll see here it says ID, and that's the one that we've mapped. Click continue and click on test action. And this will actually post out onto Instagram. So we'll click on test action. Now let's go over to Instagram and take a look. So here's my Instagram profile. You can see I've done one previously. Here's the one that we just posted with our quotes. Now you see here, there is some formatting issues with the backslash there. So that's something that I could correct in ChatGPT. But for now, it looks pretty good. 
So we know that is working and that's excellent. So we'll just click on save. The next step is to add the same quote design to our Facebook page. So if we click on our Facebook step here, so under the select options for Facebook, I'm using the Facebook pages app and we're uploading photo on a page as our event. And you'll need to connect AutoKit to Facebook in order to make this to work. And then we go into the configuration tab. I'm using a test sample page for this and we're adding the URL of our photo. Instagram won't allow us to directly export a design from Canva and upload it to, to it, but Facebook will. Go figure that out. So what I've done here is I've just hit the add symbol here and where it says fetch design export status, I'm using this export URL and it's working fine. You could also use the Dropbox one as well if you wanted to, but it's working fine with the Canva export. And again, we have our caption in there and if I click continue, and click on test action. You will go over to Facebook and make sure that it is posted correctly. So here we are, here's our page. I'm a test sample and here's our caption. And again, we're getting that backslash. So that's just a formatting issue that we'd have to deal with in ChatGPT. We have our hashtags in there. We've got some emojis, probably a little bit too many emojis. Yeah, there's definitely some formatting that we can go and correct, but it's working very well. So we'll click save here. And our next step here is to update the row of the quote that we just published. We want it to go from pending to posted or completed or whatever you want to name it. So in our next step, we've got update row. So on our configuration for updating our row, we're selecting our Canva quote tracker. We're using sheet one, of course, and we're matching our row number with the row that we got from a from the fetch action step so that's in there and then we're just changing the status from pending to completed and we're adding in the link to the dropbox the, to our image so we'll just click continue here and click on test action and we'll go over back over to our google sheet and we'll see that our status is now completed and we have a url added to our image column so we click on save there. And the next step and then totally optional is to let a person or persons know that the images were posted out on social media. So I've opted for Slack. You could do WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever choice of communication you'd like, maybe even SMS with Tulio, that's up to you. But under Slack, I'm just letting people know in the Slack channel social that it looks like we have a new image that was posted and this was the quote that was used. And that's it, a complete hands-free system that keeps your feeds active without you having to post at all. Every few days, AutoKit grabs the next quote, exports the Canva design, writes the caption, posts to Instagram and Facebook, and even pings me in Slack so I know when it's posted. You can easily adapt this to share tips, promos, or even client spotlights. If you'd like a copy of this exact workflow, the link is in the description below. And now we want to hear from you. How would you use this kind of automation in your business? Drop your ideas in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.